Hi, it's Lee, and welcome to The Test for Economist. All right, due to popular demand, we're going to try and discover what a 500,000 delivery Q4 might just look like. Sure, as if I wasn't going to do it anyway. But I got you all commenting, asking me for it, which is always good for the YouTube algorithm. Please comment anyway, though. If you ask me questions, there's a good chance I do reply. I genuinely like talking about Tesla with you all. I think we have the upper echelon of intelligence in this community, so we get a lot of great input. And your comments are often what motivates me to think of ideas for videos, so please keep them coming. Anyway, half a million deliveries a quarter. What a milestone, taking us very close to some of the big boys, like Mercedes or BMW at around two and a half million. So does that mean that Tesla is now one of the big boys too? I think we might cross that line sometime in 2023. Anyway, we have Troy Teslite saying that China should deliver 100,000 just in September. Sure, deliver, not produce, but the difference is minor. And that's September, the last month in Q3. So what if we took that same number for each month in Q4? Seems reasonable, even arguably bearish. You know, assuming no lockdowns or anything else crazy, which there always might be. On the other hand, we heard insiders from Tesla China reporting much higher figures too, over 110,000 even. So arguably, this could be on the low side. But either way, 300,000 from China in a quarter already. Oh, and remember, this is Q4 we're talking about, which is always the biggest quarter for the auto industry, Tesla included. It's also the end of the year quarter where Tesla pushed deliveries the hardest to reach record numbers. Great. So that's one location, and we're already 60% the way to our target, with three factories remaining. So we're working back from here. Let's take 140,000 for Fremont, which, given they were at 130,000 in Q2, Seems very reasonable, which means we just need 60,000 from the other two new factories. I expect them to be close to doing those numbers each, really, to be honest, but we're just going to stick to the limit of 500,000. It also allows us some breathing room if there are any incidents that do affect production. One possibility being Germany's potential energy crisis. This could affect European production, but we might hope Texas alone could carry us to these numbers anyway. Besides, 500,000 is not necessarily our target. We just want to know what it's worth. We'll just keep similar ASP as what we used in our Q3 estimate. They shouldn't be too far off and the new price increases won't take effect yet. In fact, serendipitously, around the same time the tax credits kick in, quite the coincidence there perhaps. So in effect, the new price rise to $66,000 from when it was $59,000 earlier in the year, well, after the tax credit, that's actually only an increase of $500. In other words, all this talk we hear of people wanting to cancel their orders to take advantage of the tax credit, well, it will only save them $500, and they'll have to wait maybe 6 or 12 months longer. So I don't think that will be a thing. Of course, there are likely people who may have timed it just right and get $7,500 off the $59,000 price. Anyway, this comes close to $28 billion of revenue. Wow, that sure sounds like a lot of money. I'm going to keep margins about the same as I did in my Q3 estimate. With the exception of the new factories, I'm still keeping them low at 25%, but they could have definitely increased, even at just 30,000 units each factory a quarter. Of course, I expect their production to be higher anyway, and if the production is higher, then the margins also higher. The higher production, the higher the margins, the higher the gross, which significantly affects net profits that much more. Now the OPEX has been covered. I say this often because it's important and it's the reason no one else can make a profit, because they can't hit volume production. They just start new lines each time, and are hoping that eventually there'll be enough accumulative profit from them all that they can finally cover their OPEX. All right, let's add $300 million in for our regulatory credits, as there are still a lot of auto manufacturers who are failing to produce enough non-profitable EV compliance cars that they still have to buy credits from Tesla and fund the future factory production for Tesla. Remember when they used to tell us Tesla will only be profitable whilst they can sell regulatory credits? Lucky for us, we can read financial statements. That $300 million looks pretty small now in comparison. Now compared to our Q3 estimates, the overall margin has gotten slightly lower now due to the factories ramping up with lower margin, but that has gotten a lot bigger in the auto gross profit, now at $9.7 billion. That's very close to $10 billion. Again, we just leave the other side of the business as they were in Q2, as they are inconsequential. OPEX should be about where it was in Q2, leaving us with an operating profit of $8 billion, over three times Q2, just two quarters earlier. Yeah, 
that's a pretty big difference, especially if a lot of the current valuation is to do with that terrible Q2. Then after tax and interest, we get to $7.1 billion in GAAP earnings, $7.5 billion in non-GAAP, GAAP EPS of $2.27 or $6.82 pre-split, and non-GAAP earnings of $2.39 post-split or $7.17 pre-split. Wow, $7.17 pre-split feels like a substantial number to me. If we include my estimates for Q3 and use pre-split EPS, then we have $17.94 EPS for the year. And what I think is more important is the actual gap earnings. If we total them up for the year, it comes to $18 billion. Not quite 20, but a good effort nonetheless. Especially when you factor in all the massive headwinds Tesla have been facing. Either way, this is an indicative enough number to actually calculate the 12 month trailing PE ratio, the biggest indicator used to value a stock price. With the market cap currently at $846 billion, then that would be a PE ratio of 47. If Tesla generated these earnings for the rest of the year, then they would have an actual PE ratio of 47. Now, just to re-clarify, 500,000 was not my estimate. I think it's possible it could be even higher. I think the new factories should achieve a lot more than what I said. China could have ramped more too, but either way, do you really think Tesla would be sitting at a PE ratio of 47? A valuation of 47 times earnings. Oh, but hang on, 40%. Yes, 40% of the entire year's earnings would be from this Q4 at 500,000 units. Well, if that's the case, then let's see what that is annualized. It's $28.5 billion, which is 60% higher than the trailing 12 months. Big difference. Now that ends up coming in at a P ratio of 29.5 relative to Q4. Now, should Tesla, a company that at this stage is literally just one tenth the way through their end of the decade production target, have a P ratio under 30? Not to mention their FSD robotaxi business that should add an additional zero onto the valuation. Not to mention their energy business, which could double the valuation again. Not to mention their bots business that could double all that value again. Well, that's for you to decide. I can only show you the numbers, but in my opinion, I think a lot of people are really missing something here. They just aren't getting Tesla. I mean, there's a high chance that I likely get called a Tesla fanboy more frequently than the average Tesla investor. But I humor and talk to people who have anything to the contrary to say, and they usually do just end up with a comment like, you would say that you're a Tesla fanboy but I'm someone who is working very hard at tackling every single angle I can think of to attempt to find Tesla's Achilles heel. Anyway, it doesn't take me long to find they lack credibility and it also never gets through to them because of the whole confirmation bias. But these are the numbers and that feels like a low PE ratio to me. And even if Tesla don't reach 500,000 this quarter, well, the next quarter is only three months away and they probably will then. In fact, Tesla do have some plans to expand production quite a bit through next year, whilst reducing costs quite significantly too, with higher prices. Well, they all add significantly further to profits too. There definitely seems to be a massive disconnect between Tesla's value and Wall Street's valuation. In the meantime, don't second guess yourself. Don't listen to the anti-Tesla crowd. Just think for yourself without noise. Numbers are numbers. No statistics, no lies. They are what they are. And of course, this spreadsheet is available to download on Patreon. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.